I'll be back in about 10 minutes. I'm going to go and get a laptop to replace this thing. In the meantime, I've got two new members of the staff who are going to do a short introduction of themselves. We've got Rachel. Over here we've got Beth. Hello. Okay, Hello. and they're going to come and do work on this work and all the other types of work we're doing as well. So we'll probably see them quite here quite regularly. And we may see, just see Beth in January. <laughs> Possibility. Okay. Um, right. So I'll leave you to it. Can you hold that? Yes. Yeah. I've got all the microphones on so you will get picked up. Okay. I'll be back so as soon as I can. the video can hear me now, but we've been, got no way of telling, so we'll <laughs> just go for it. Um, so my name is Rachel. Um, I work with Gray in the same office as does Ben. Um, and my official title is Communications and Digital Content Officer. So it's a bit of a long one, a bit of a mouthful, but what it essentially means is I do um, all of the science communication on the website, so writing all the blog articles and newsletters, um, all the rest of the content that goes on the big Ask for Jealous website is kind of our team's job, really. Um, and um, yeah, other things that we do is some patient support, so the patient Facebook group, um, we'll be helping to manage that, and helping with these meetings as well, and the weekly Skype meetings that we do as well. So yeah, would it bore you too much to hear a little bit about my background? Not at all, Okay, I'll, all right, I'll try and keep it short because it's a bit of, I've had a bit of a circuitous route here, let's say. So um, I actually started off my career in veterinary science um, and I, I was trained to be a vet at Bristol University. Um, and then I decided that the clinical veterinary life wasn't probably for me, you know, seeing one patient at a time, I wanted to have a bit of a broader reach. Um, so I decided to go into research and I, um, I got a scholarship in Norway. So I lived out in Norway for a while doing work on laying hens um, and, the, and their welfare. Really enjoyed it, came back and I thought, what do I do now? Um, so I started working for the RSPCA um, and I was quite disappointed actually when I started working for that charity. It wasn't what I expected working for a charity would be like. Um, and I, I very quickly left and decided to go back into research and started a PhD on aggressive behaviour in dogs. So at this point you're probably thinking, why is this girl working here? So yeah, I do have a very a very broad set of interests, but um, during my PhD I was really interested in telling people about dogs and dog behaviour so that we could reduce the number of dog bites that were happening in the UK because there's a whole heck of a lot and it causes a lot of injury and a lot of um, emotional as well as physical trauma to people. Um, so when that finished I've done things like blog articles. Yeah I'll pick up my vlogging camera again. The media. So I was really interested in seeing if I could pursue this and, and talk about science to the general public um, and I ended up at Cancer Research UK doing their science that's a bit of a new side of things to me. So I 
started off in research. I did PhD postdoc in the Netherlands, which was really nice to work abroad for a bit. Um, but then I realised I didn't like teaching undergraduates because they're little brats. <laughs> frankly, and also um, it wasn't doing my blood pressure a lot of good because doing the experiments, if they didn't work, I got I took it so personally, and it just it was it was getting a bit miserable. So I thought, which side of it do I like? I went to the writing. Um, so I went off to a medical writing, like a private agency working for big pharmaceutical companies, and I absolutely hated it. It was so corporate, it was just, ugh, oh, it was awful. So I've joined the NHS, come back to the NHS, um, looking forward to, to getting a lot more involved in this kind of thing. Um, it, does, it all fits quite well with my background because um, my research, it was um, microbiology and um, sort of molecular things and genetics. So I've started to apply a bit of it to what I'm doing. But got a, a lot of, yeah, we've got a lot of reading and catching up and getting up to speed before we can answer a lot of questions. So like when we were on the Skype call yesterday, um, there were some questions that we were a bit nervous about answering just because we don't feel like we know enough yet. So you guys are the experts. We've been living it. So if we, if we, if we get it wrong, I can just chat up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll, uh, I'll come back and join you because I'm kind of frightened that I'm blocking the video over. but um, I think what would be helpful for us is, sorry, I'll have to pause while I hold the mic. There we go. <laughs> um, so I think what would be helpful for us is if we learn a little bit about yourselves, if that's okay. Um, kind of things like what your names and, and where you're from, um, and perhaps what type of aspergillosis you have, if you're comfortable sharing that, if you're not, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it would just be helpful for us to kind of know a little bit more about you, really. So yeah. shall we start from the back and move forward? Is that yeah. okay? <laughs> <laughs> the speakers are fine because there's little speakers here, so don't worry about that. Okay. A, to spread the word and try and help other people. So if someone might walk through the door that's just been diagnosed with this, and again, sometimes we can just have a little chat and talk. And yes. Just yeah. for that, that that reason, really. Yeah. You know, it's not like we're suffering, but obviously our Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's a great help. And I feel like I remember your names. I think I've written something about the fundraising you did. Right? Yeah, every, every October when, when my father passed away, um, my father used to be quite big into martial arts. Right. And Used to train with a lot of different people, mm -hmm. and we used to ask everybody for one pound, no more than a pound, and it was to try and see how many people would remember him. And yes. however much we raised was, yes. it was, I think the first year we raised about 300 odd pounds, which was really good because yeah. it was still 300 odd people. Yeah. And over the years, it's it's down now, but a lot of people do a lot of other things, you know, with the Christmas oh, cards yeah. and, and so yeah. on, so on. So normally, if we can get somewhere between you know 100 to mm -hmm. 300 pounds, like that would be doing quite well. But it's just just something we've done each year. Right. It's not a massive amount of money, but we do it every year just to try and give back to, yes. you know, yeah. just to, to help out with something. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you very much. Hi, Hi I'm Malcolm. Um, <coughs> I've been attending the clinic here probably for four or five years now, I think. Um, I was diagnosed with ABPA following um, a bout of pneumonia. Right. Um, the follow-up 
work that was done here, um, when, that was when the ABP was diagnosed, and unfortunately I live about 10 minutes from here, so this was naturally the hospital that I was sent to, um, which was just as well, because I'm not sure it would have been picked up everywhere. Um, yeah. So uh, I've been on treatment since then. Um, currently, I have the joys of nebulized amphotericin, so uh, that's uh, my, my current treatment. Yeah.
and it was the empty box and the mince pies. <laughs> so it was the winner got the empty box. I'm sure Graham's got the picture still somewhere. Quite so the following year, we was there, David had gone to order trophies for a comp that was coming up, and he ordered a trophy for the quiz, and we just donated it in Dave's name. So the quiz goes in Dave's, uh, Dave McIntyre's memory, yeah. and it is quite, uh, he was always wanting to learn stuff mm -hmm. and progress, so it's very fitting that, and, and the banter that goes around yes. the quiz, yeah. that, is, that is nice to see. Yeah. 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 Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I look forward to that. We'll yeah. probably be right at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, you <laughs> better get squatting up, you can take it quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds brilliant. Does that happen in December then? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll come on it last year. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, I think certain people were missing, I think. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sabotage people, so yeah. <laughs> get rid of the opposition. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, Dougie's normally the one into the fights quite hard for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we took over, didn't we? Keith yeah. wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any cheating going on? Do you have to police it? Or well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. probably, probably yeah. lots of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of mobile phone activity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you won last time? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can't work a mobile phone chair. So <laughs> <laughs> well, they get really serious now. I've been to a couple of pub quizzes where. You know, everyone's sat, and you can see the teams that are quite quiet when the head's down. You think, I just wonder if you've got your dog. Well, there's money involved, isn't there? Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. glory at the moment. Yeah, it's pure glory. I'm sorry, I'm going to polish it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely, actually, that, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Sorry about that, Dave. This computer which is designed to go in to run the supplies in this room stopped working. Well, it's working but it's not projecting. So don't know why. <laughs> so I'm running off a laptop now. So Rachel and Beth introduce themselves for a half an hour at least. <laughs> Good. So what I thought I would do now, we haven't got uh, another speaker today. So I would do one of my things where um, I'll um, cover one of well, it's going to be more, a couple of topics, but it's probably not enough time for everything now. Um, and in particular, one stands out in the, 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 has come out literally within the last couple of weeks, which has Professor Denning and myself going, wow, that's, that's brilliant. It's a really good, interesting paper. And it's also built on extremely solid foundations. Uh, so unlike that paper we looked at about two years ago that was all about making cells differentiate into human tissue, which turned out to be a fraud, <laughs> um, which is one of the few times I've ever seen fraud. This is actually, the important word is science, one of the biggest journals in the world. So for a paper to get into that, it must be pretty good, it must be pretty complete, it must have a really nice story. It's about sterilizing immunity in the lung relies on targeting fungal apoptosis like programmed cell death. Okay, so it's talking about how um, our bodies kill fungal spores, but they've made some important advances. It's an American group. So we are all inhaling from a thousand to even up to a hundred million spores a day. Okay, why doesn't everyone in that case have fungal lung infections? Only a few people do. Well, let's see if this uh, and it all set up. Remember, I'll give this. I'll give these videos a miss now. I haven't got enough time. Um, this is a video that shows that in our lungs we have we have cells called macrophages which are mobile they literally crawl all over our lung tissue looking for spores looking for bacteria looking for viruses and if they find them they kill them but we didn't in turn in, in, with fungi we didn't know how they killed them so 
So essentially what this group seems to have done is to set out to find out, we know it kills fungal spores, so let's find out how it kills fungal spores. On the face of it, not tremendously interesting. But what they found was very interesting. Um, this is a video showing it actually happening. I can have a shot at showing it to you actually. This one's the one that I wanted to show everyone. Just oops, back. I don't think this will play. Let's have a go. That's going to take forever. Yeah, never mind. Should be chance my arm. I don't. Website. So I've posted this on our website, and what you can see is a sea of dots, essentially. And what they've done, I think I've shown this to you before. What they've done is um, this is a section through lung tissue, okay? And it's stained up lung tissue cells in red. It's all still alive, okay? So lung tissue is in red. The macrophages that I'm talking about are the green dots. And the blue things, I think, well, they, were, they are in some of the other slides, so I assume it's the same in this slide. These are fungal conidia, which are germinating. To me, that looks wrong in this case because this doesn't look like a fungal, fungus to me, but it might have, it could be, it could still be the same. So if I run it, keep your eye on the green dots because they crawl all over the place. It's only a six second video. There you go. Those are actual neutrophils, which are tiny macrophage, crawling all over other tissues. That's speeded up. I'll show you again. But they are pretty quick. And we'll probably cover most of our most of our anything that goes into the lungs they can find within an hour or two. Okay. Back to where we were. Um, the way they kill spores is they literally wrap themselves around the sp any, any spore or a germinating spore, internalize the spore and the kill the spore once it's inside them. So it's called engulfing. They're literally eating the spores. They live to... Well, eat. The spores that big and the green knots that big? No, the spores are that big and the green things are that big. Oh, so just what we see them on there, them blue things were massive, well, that, weren't they? Yeah, that was, an, uh, that was like... Well, that's lots of little blue dots. So that's like Not the, one. They've mm -hmm. germinated and the threads of the fungus are growing ah, out. So they'll have to break for hours. Yeah, so the conidia are much smaller. The other slides made that much clearer. But <laughs> uh, well, let's not bother with that now. Okay, so if we can work out... Well, you, as you all know, we've got a certain number of antifungal drugs that work in a certain way and we really need to find more because <coughs> three or four of the antifungal drugs we've got all work in the same way. So once you become resistant to one, you re relatively rapidly become resistant to more. The, the fungal infection does. So we, we need to find new antifungal drugs and we need to find new ways of killing fungal spores. Okay. So that's pretty much why we 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 knew this happened, we knew that neutrophils engulfed these spores, we knew the spores died, but we didn't know how until now, because um, they made it what to my mind and Prof Denning's mind was a quite a startling discovery. These macrophages engulf these spores. They don't actually kill the spores, the spore kills itself, which is a really weird concept. But very useful. <coughs> they kill them, they, they are forced to kill themselves by triggering a mechanism within the spores, which we have, and all fungi have, and all the uh, multicellular organisms such as us have the same mechanism called apoptosis, which is a Greek word 
can't remember exactly what it means now, but when it's referring to program cell death. Now what that is, if you can imagine, when, when um, at the moment of conception we gradually develop into a ball of cells with no features on it at all. So you can imagine something growing out to form an arm, but then you have to make fingers. So you, it would grow out like that. But how do we make the? How do you make your fingers out of that? How do you make the bones and so on? You have to have separation happening on so so that you can do that. And apoptosis is the very very precisely controlled mechanism that kills the cells off between your fingers, if you like, that forms so that you end up with a formed hand. Similarly, in your lungs, apoptosis will be the mechanism by which the air spaces are formed because it will just be a blob of cells, and then, then it will pick out all the cells inside, kill them off, and leaving a nice gap, and that's what will form our lungs. You can imagine any mechanism that kills cells is inherently extremely dangerous to the developing animal and to us now because it would kill all our cells and there won't be much of us left. So it's an extremely highly controlled process. It's not just killing everything, it's very, very carefully killing specific cells. Okay? If apoptosis fails, um, the organism cannot survive. It's vital for growth. It's, uh, we know a lot about apoptosis, and I actually published a paper on apoptosis in the 1990s, and when I was working in cancer. Uh, we've been looking at it since then, because if a cell doesn't die through programmed death and lives on, it becomes uncontrolled. It becomes a cancer cell. So we, we've been investigating this mechanism for, for decades. So we know a lot about it. <coughs> so, shall I show this video? It's not blink, is it? Never mind. Okay. I was going to show you a bit. Um, uh, uh, Serves me right for trying to do a video instead of a picture because I was moving over the two. It's just a short video showing um, cancer cells. Uh, living cancer cells sort of moving around the way cells do then you apply an anti-cancer drug and the cells die but the cells die through apoptosis they don't they're not just killed chemically they die in a very specific way so it's just an illustration of, of how um, we can use apoptosis we in that case they've used a drug to trigger apoptosis so if you give that to someone with that type of cancer it will kill every single specific cell of that cancer because it's triggering all of those specific cell types to kill themselves, okay? And there are already drugs doing that. That's how we treat some cancers. Um, so, this group, getting back to fungi, used uh, a test for apoptosis called tunnel. You can just see there. So these are numbers of cells, percentage of cells that have been marked using the tunnel assay. And if it's marked using the tunnel assay, it's become apoptotic. So it's killed itself. And you can see that when you um, add, um, so you've got free canidia where there's very, very little apoptosis going on. But what they found is when you look at all these cells being killed by these neutrophils, it marks something like 95% of them are dying through apoptosis. So this is how they proved that these cells aren't just being pulled into pieces, they're actually being specifically killed using this process. And that's happening inside the, the neutrophils. So, this is the first time that, our, that we're aware of that an animal such as ourselves has been shown to use this as a form of defense against pathogens. Okay. My speculation is that um, because apoptosis is so vital for the growth of everything, then if we can use that mechanism to kill fungus, the fungus will find it extremely difficult to develop resistance to that attack. Because if they switch off apoptosis, the cells are no longer viable. So it will kill itself either way. So it could be an incredibly useful way to treat fungal infection.
uh, the paper did more than that. It showed uh, that it actually showed what I've just said that fungus afumigators cannot switch off the gene that causes apoptosis. If it does, that fungus can no longer grow, it dies. So it's shown that to be true with a fungal pathogen that we're very interested in. They've also got a drug. Uh, this is all done in mice, so we're not in humans yet. We've got a drug which they know um, will switch on apoptosis in other contexts. And they were found that when they applied this drug um, to mice who'd been artificially infected with aspergillus by, by uh, getting them to inhale canidia, then those that were tested with the drug lived, and those that weren't tested with the drug died. So it's clearly working. We've actually already got a drug that can do that. It's, only, it's not a drug ready to be used in humans, but it's working in mice. Also, uh, what we just said, essentially, um, they also went in and tried to and it, and, and manipulated the apoptotic gene in the fungus and showed that it, it's switched off in any way, it's faded to the fungus, which is pretty much what we just talked about. The activity in the macrophages that's triggering apoptosis, they've also worked out. And it's called something, uh, the gene activity is this here, NADPH oxidase. That's the thing that's triggering apoptosis of these fungal chlamydia. So we know the mechanism. We've got a drug that can trigger it, that we give, we've successfully given to mice. And we've got targets that we can use as a, another facet of treatment to trigger apoptosis, to kill mold and canidia in living animal bodies. So it's not difficult to see the relevance of that to aspergillosis and the treatment of aspergillosis. It also might be, this might be a target for looking at why some people are vulnerable to this infection. There might be changes in this gene or in this gene pathway. And if you remember Paul Bowyer, that's what he's looking at at the moment in the genetics of people who've got CPA and ABPA. And uh, he found um, certain changes that he told us about last year. He's coming back next month and he tells me he's got another similar story to tell us this month. So I'm going to ask him about an ABPA to see what he's, whether they've detected any changes. They may not have looked yet because this paper only came out a couple of weeks ago. So this forms. A uh, terrific target, uh, a whole range of targets that we can use. It, we can possibly detect people who are vulnerable to aspergillosis and fungal infection and identify them and then treat them and make sure they don't get it in the first place. It's a new, there are at least two or three new strategies that we might use to treat people who are already infected. Uh, in addition, <coughs> The process called apoptosis they have identified in fungi is completely different to the process in our bodies. So if you switch on apoptosis in the fungus, it won't switch on our apoptosis systems, which is a big advantage. That means that it's not going to be very toxic to us. It it's, a, it's a strategy we can use that shouldn't be very toxic, which is terrific. Uh, no side effects, or fewer side effects, I suppose I should say multiple new targets and we already have a drug ready to go, um, a drug type ready to go. I don't, I'm not sure that they can give S12, I doubt if they can give that, that to humans uh, yet uh, for some time, but certainly if you've got a ready-made example of something that will work. So that accelerates the process of finding a drug that we could use in, in, in humans. So speculating, uh, my speculation, Apoptosis is a natural mechanism designed to be non-toxic and to act simultaneously on large numbers of cells. Theoretically, if we could get a trigger into every single conidia in somebody's lungs, it always kills itself, which would be an absolutely amazing thing if we could achieve that. And that's 
a mechanism that could possibly work. Um, I mean, because apoptosis is designed to work systemically, that's, that's how it works. Um, maybe very helpful for chronic aspergillosis. This was a, an inhaled acute aspergillosis experiment, but you, it's very easy to see that it could be applicable to people with chronic aspergillosis as well. Uh, it's a step forward in the prevention, the diagnosis, and treatment of aspergillosis. We just need them to start moving that through to human studies. Um, whenever they write these experiments, they, all, they, they will have had these results for a year, probably. So they're probably a year further on now. So um, it's going to be very interesting what comes out of that group in the near future. They're quite, they're, they're rather, I've not heard of that group before, actually. So. Well, this is an example of everyone working on different things and suddenly a surprise result comes up in a group you didn't expect it to come up with and advances us in ways we didn't expect. This is why basic science is important for uh, all of us. Okay, that's the paper. Uh, do, do we know anything about whether it's, it's the same gene or a similar gene in various form of species? There's, there's a lot of um, conservation of the gene across fungal species, so it should be applicable to more than aspergillosis itself. Um, the background behind it is very encouraging, so that's part of the reason why it's in science. I think the apoptosis gene in, in, um, in mammalian cells, is that very from cell time? Or uh, about I would imagine that's considered within mammalian time. I don't I know that um, But it's very concerned in humans. Coming on from that speculation, if um, you're somebody who can get surgilosis yeah. because of the uh, mistaken gene, and you could get rid of the main attack, do you think you still have to sort of take a long-term medicine to stop yourself from getting reinfected? Possibly. We, we, um, in the short term, it's probably a longer term. Because we've identified you as susceptible, yes. we will take prophylactic precautions yes. to stop. I mean, you could change your lifestyle, perhaps. You, you, you would know you're going to be vulnerable to highly molding situations. So they'll probably ask you to avoid rather than treat you, because doctors don't like to treat you or not, if they can get away with it. But certainly, it's, 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 there's, there's the higher, if there's some very high risk groups, and they can be quite with high risk groups of cancer, there are often certain types of treatment to, to um, protect them from those cancers. Or somebody who's highly vulnerable to aspergillosis will almost certainly be the same. It dovetails in nicely with all the human genome work because we'll be able to find those those people quite cheaply. I think it's well under a thousand pounds to do a genome study on per person. Be, be well under that now. It was a thousand pounds, four or five years ago. So yeah, it's hugely encouraging and an angle that we haven't you know, thought would be, would be going down. Is there a single gene for apoptosis, or is it sort of a whole chain? It's a pathway, and knowing cancer, it was, there, was, um, there were a number of genes involved, yeah. and we were rapidly, we were trying to find out how many genes are involved, yeah. and I worked on a gene that um, held back apoptosis. No, no, promoted it by holding back other gene products. It's a very, very interlinked process, so it's quite complex. We know a lot about it already. I presume it's going to be the same color as the other one. I have thought so. Yeah. When I mean, they were careful to call this apoptosis like, like yeah. and, but it has all the characteristics of apoptosis. The tunnel is a kit that's designed to use on humans with, and, 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 and mice, I suppose. And it, it works by tagging the ends of DNA that's been fragmented in a way that's characteristic of apoptosis. So it's fairly. Fragments the DNA and attaches onto the end of the fragment. So it's um, fairly specific, so it should be.
service. <coughs> more hope for more types of treatments. Coming to my seat. Okay. So um, we would normally have a break now. Shall I carry on? Or do you want a break now and um, come back in half an hour? Who was who's gas for cup of tea? Doug's gas me for something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't ask him that. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a 10 minute break and then come back and then I'll finish up with all okay. the rest of the stuff? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> we are UHSM is a green hospital, right? We walk around, the walls are all painted green. Okay, the times are changing. We are now with the Shaw Hospital. Manchester University NHS Foundation Trust, which has its own website, mft.nhs.uk. We are no longer UHSM. MFT was formed on the 1st of October 2017 following the merger of Central Manchester University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. We could make this easy to read out. CMFT and the University Hospital of South Manchester NHS Foundation Trust, which was UHSM. So UHSM is no more, but we're still confident and sure. It's the only thing that we've been consistent throughout the whole thing. So which is Central Manchester? Is that MRI? Yes. Yes. So we've got MRI with Ensure, helpfully now labelled with Ensure again. Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. Royal Eye Hospital, St Mary's, the Dental Hospital, Withington, which I think is still running in a reduced yes, capacity, yeah. oh, yeah. Stra well, Trafford General, mm -hmm. and Altrincham are now all under this. We're all now one big trust. There's no Manchester right now. Next, next sentence. No. <laughs> and this is the first wave, okay? So because this is the easier merger, and the reason we've only just um, mentioned it now is that they had to hold a variety, had to get it past a variety of authorities, including the um, Monopoly, Monopoly Trust? Monopoly Commission. Because, yeah, Commission. Why is there only one Monopolist Commission? Yes. <laughs> There's probably also another one headed up by Waddington as well. Um, so, um, so that's, that's the first one. Um, it doesn't affect National Aspergillosis Centre, we stay here. This is becoming a more specialist area. As you all read in the news, here's the font of all knowledge <laughs> on this issue. As you all read in the news, A&E was supposed to be closing down in Winshaw a year, 18 months ago. Well, the, the, the building is going to be a new A&E yeah, okay. yeah. there now, so obviously that's, that's, um, that's gone by the by. Have you got, you've got, no, Chris is modelling a new blue. Suits you, Chris, it suits you. We're going blue, which, which suits me as well. Presumably they've just bought 10,000 of those things. Yeah, yeah. Matt, Matt, who was here last, last month, pointed out that they're going to have an awful lot of walls now to paint blue yeah. instead of green. So. so there you go. Very exciting. And the next, the next, the, the, the next phase will be North Manchester. In a, I think it's about 18 months. It's more difficult because they are not a Manchester Trust; they're a Pennine <coughs> Trust. Oh, okay. Even though they're called Manchester, North Manchester. And, uh, it's like Salford, but they're obviously not Manchester. Salford, not Manchester. So. Well, they do have an idea to make quite a big idea. Who so. Salford or North? Um, North Manchester. North, yes, because that's where David originally came from. Was yeah. North. And they have beds there as well, so that could be quite a change. So, who's going to head up ID? ID could be a whole other conversation yeah. that's happening in the next few years. You will notice that the, the um, hospital is still covered with UHSM paraphernalia. It's because the decision was only really finally come through a week to ten days ago. Yeah. I see they put up posters. The actual signage to the entrance of the hospital has actually changed. Mm. And there's posters with which are now blue and instead of green. green. Posters on the walls with new people that have joined. New 
folks perhaps leave the lab. The new MFD demigods. Yeah. So that is going to happen in North Manchester. Uh, is there anybody else after North Manchester? I don't think so. What's, what's the advantage of this? What's, what does this mean to Joe Wallace? It's supposed to mean better health care. It's, it's supposed to be a super hospital, if you like. And all the specialist services and, you know, are supposed to be more central. It's got to keep us inside the hospital. No, I'm, I'm not sure that the, the, the downside is for people who are in a position, they could end up having to travel further, but they claim that they'll get better quality of care, but the patient would have to answer that for me. And, yeah. They've been arguing that for some time, um, haven't they? Yeah, I think they, when they first It flows about, in one or the other direction generally, doesn't it? When they first talk about a super hospital, they ask for your opinions, and I put some stuff up on there saying that. I can understand the idea of a super hospital where you've got this one massive yeah, hospital, yeah, yeah, yeah. right, and everything's mm -hmm. under one roof, like a supermarket, yeah, right? I get yeah. that, but you've still got nine separate hospitals, right? and not, they're not going to change except for no, one. No, because North Manchester will close eventually. Okay, so you'll get rid of that one, but how would it, how would it affect Windshaw? What, what, what's going to happen different here? Are you going to get. Are you going to get It'll be about specific services, so what could happen, I say, of this early days, yeah. But, so, for instance, can I move out surgical stuff over to Central? Right, so there's space here. Ah, okay. And we do, we specialise in, I'm giving you this as an example. No, 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 So, it's not the Yeah, yeah, we specialise in respiratory. Right. With insurance, don't we? We have a big respiratory focus here. So, it might be that they say to Central, well, you send all your respiratory stuff to with insurance. They, they take our surgical workload and all the few bits of trauma or something, although trauma I think is going to be something else. So, 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 so really before they finish, they'll, they'll do all this and split it all out so that then, when you're not getting rid of hospitals, although I do think that no one actually could have enough going back. I think it's the got to get a lot of things So, we won't invest in money in that. So, so in, in a nutshell, so like you had a birth, you'd go to that hospital, or yeah. you cut your finger, you'd go to that yeah, hospital. Yeah, so the, the right? idea and then the is specialists yeah, all the GPs around would know that any surgical stuff should go to central Manchester. And, and all the guys are there around the people. Rather than having pockets of it in so many different places. Because for every service you have, you have to have a team mm -hmm. behind mm -hmm. that, don't you? So you yeah. have to have all your doctors, your nurses, your admin team, mm -hmm. your director of manager, you know, so so by filtering it all out into that way, you can just reduce. So let's imagine you're going to be the respiratory guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that means you'll get rid of them out of them out of that. In theory. That's what. I, that's, that's what should I, happen in, yeah, in, in, yeah. in the, the. So if you've got well, a lung problem. You and I know that will take years to. Yeah, sort so out that's what should space. happen. Yeah, and you see, the problem with MRI is they can only go up. Because of the size. Got no space, and we haven't got any space either. Although there's, there's talk that um, some of the industrial. But you wouldn't need too much space because if you're going to be losing other departments, that'll free up room, wouldn't it? In theory. There should be fewer managers. Oh, that's cheap. More in this. That's cheap. One, one super cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have lots of yeah, yeah, Don't think it's a bit suspicious the way that the main. Incentive comes from that level of management. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. And I mean, they've now got a big job to compete for. I think if <laughs> far be it for me to be under the spotlight for problems, I think they will definitely have some of the services to be fair. Because, you know, the high maintenance in that sense, you've got to do a lot of work behind it to get them back on track, haven't you? Um, so, you know, and I think Pennine's only been targeted because they're so old and Whereas at least the MRI has got quite a lot of modern pieces to it. As as ours, we've got our old bits, as you know, but at least we have got, you know, yeah, versions of new bits. So, yeah, just watch this space. You know. yeah. The take-up message is nothing's happening here. No, well, it shouldn't affect you as patients. That's the most important thing. Uh -huh. Right. Moving further abroad, I mentioned this last yeah. month. Yeah. And um, we've got to the point now where we've got to actually do something about this. 
uh, but we haven't yet. So I might give you an update on what we're doing for patients for this meeting. Um, it's highly possible there'll be a patient meeting that you could come to, but it's Lisbon in Portugal. And how many would seriously think of going to a meeting in Portugal that are here? So nobody. So I think I think we make it a, a Portuguese meeting for Portuguese people personally. It's <laughs> stretching the point to actually to the, the average layperson wants to spend money to come out to Portugal to watch. So that that's a work in progress. Lost one of the airlines that go, used to go there Is that two? How many, how many round air flights have been cancelled? And don't forget the Manchester Science Festival coming up in a week on oh, 19th. What's that? A week on Thursday. Um, obviously going to be a really interesting event held at the um, Museum of Science and Technology. But like I mentioned last time, we are holding the Royal Society are holding a Keller fungus exhibition upon this in, within this um, organization. And several members of our staff, and I haven't mentioned to you two yet either, <laughs> uh, will be going and you're free to go as well. Um, and that might actually, I don't actually know which Saturday they're thinking of doing that yet. I think that's going to be on the whole time. And at least part of that time I'll be on holiday, so I may well not be getting it. You'll have to be on this. So that, 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 could, that could be worth visiting. It's actually going to be a, a thriller. It's going to be somebody's got these symptoms, do your diagnostics, interview your patient, diagnose what they've got, set up in a space like this, which I showed you last time. So there's the outbreak consultation room, and they're probably, presumably they're going to be doing it with different types of. Um, disease, but well, several of our clinicians are, will be hanging around for you to uh, ask appropriate questions. So that should be fun, I just thought I'd mention that. Um, and finally, we need to finish this, oh, the other thing before we got onto this was uh, just to tell you the new community book is out. I'm hearing more and more from people that, that they're picking this up and then they're getting in contact. About that. Someone actually phoned me this morning saying, I've got your book, and uh, it tells me, it's told me about aspidulosis, and I didn't know anything about aspidulosis, and now my doctor tells me I've got this, and will I have it forever, and so on and so on. So it's good, a good communication tool. Um, this is as pretty much as last year, except it's now got a pharmacy section um, resulting from the talk we had from Matt last month. Um, it, it's got a whole section on intra, bori, and postcondensol in there. So um, do feel free to take a copy. Other than that, it's more or less the same on the page on the front. Yeah. Everyone goes ah when they see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so have a look at that. Make any suggestions or changes if you think they are appropriate. Now. This is the patient survey, if you were here last month. This is what we do every February, and I'm just feeding back to you as part of a, a statutory obligation the results of, this, of, of what, how we survey the patients. We got about halfway through last time, so we can whiz through the first bit. Did all that, did all that. Did that, oh, that's where we had that conversation about postal, yeah. postal cost. Okay. Right, we got here. So now we're getting up to the the, um, the questions asked about websites and information and that sort of thing. So um, the patient's website, which is nacpatients.org.uk, um, which you can get to from asipjulis.org.uk, 46% <coughs> of patients who expressed a preference had visited this website, which is pretty good. That's just about everyone who has access to the internet has had a look, so that, that's great. 66% um, of those people, two thirds of those people, used portable devices. So that that's great because that's what we now, we designed the new website, or the changing website to 
to work on your mobile phones better. So that seems to have addressed the need. And everyone liked it, so that, that, that's fine. We are actually, after several comments, we're, we're, we're looking, we're, we're going to at some point be asking your opinions on how we're going to change the Facebook's website. Uh, because um, it's, it's a very dense, and we want to simplify it a lot. So we'll probably bring you a few different options and uh, see what you think at a later date. For those who have not visited the site, most people have no access. So 33% said they have no access. Of, that's of the people that didn't visit. Um, four, only four people did not feel it was uh, the need to visit the website, and two were not aware of it. So we, we pretty much managed to contact everybody. Everybody was aware of it, and almost everyone goes there. So that, that's. I'm reasonably happy with that, but we do aim to improve this website significantly in the next year or so. Okay. Uh, more information, are there any suggestions for more patient information leaflets? And this is something we could also, a question we could also ask of you now. Almost everyone said, um, didn't, didn't think that, couldn't think of a new patient information leaflet. Leaflet, and a lot of people said they found those quality booklets to be to provide most of their needs, which is great. The last one, yeah. hmm? the last one this one, right? Th th this is a kind of a spurious. How do we solve this problem? I think they wrote that more than once. In, in, in the problem? Some of, but the problem is aspergillosis, I think. Oh, I see. Yeah, never all It's relatively <laughs> spurious. They just. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, not, not too surprised me yeah. feeling. Just, I just don't want to know yeah. all about this. I just want to know yeah, how we just, uh, yeah. just solve it. Don't tell me about it. Just solve yeah. it. <laughs> Actually, I can sympathise with. I'm sure most of us can. This meeting. <laughs> only only four percent of everyone who was asked the question, which was about 100 people, have actually attended this meeting. So this meeting isn't particularly popular. For many reasons. So you bring your friends next time. <laughs> yeah, bring your friends, yeah. I'm going to try changing the hosts around to see if that makes a difference. See, it's made a difference for yeah, Skype already, don't you think? <laughs> Introduced a different approach. Um, I've, I've been doing this for seven years, no, seven, eight years now. So I'm sure you've had sick of the sight of me by now. Um, so I don't know whether there's anything we can do about that. We're, we're offering. The facility, but we're holding it on the biggest clinic day, so most people can just walk down. We've had the the issue where people are saying, "Well, I'm still I'm in the clinic and I've come down, except on this one appointment, which is a fair comment." Um, to I don't solve, think anyone should have to miss an appointment. They should have a marker in place to say, "Yes, if you should, in the AR meeting, please, you know, and they should just." Um, and we we we've mentioned it several times. And I think, like we said, sort of about getting a phone. Well, I mean, I have my mobile phone with me anyway, so someone would go yeah. through that and say, me too. Can you tell me to so and so to come out? Yes. It could be a bit more proactive. If people want it, that, I think that's not, that shouldn't be an obstacle to get into. I don't think so. It isn't just the clinic appointment, it's the bloods and then yeah, yeah. the yeah, yeah. yeah. query, yeah. x ray. I mean, it can be a so has everybody so here so been here to clinic or did you just come to this no. meeting specifically? No, I just come to me, but I was no, going on Wednesday to clinic. So. Yeah, I go on a Wednesday too, but sometimes it's a Wednesday and then I'm here on a Friday. So it's just it's you guys. So yeah. yeah. And it was, Today, and it was hard to do it. Just right. yeah. Yeah. So it's a, there are some examples where that doesn't work. This is on the social market. I can put movies on later. Yes. <laughs> 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 is another man who's in training for the quiz. <laughs> 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 um, those people who do come say it was very informative. Good. Um, I have actually had people come up to me twice now 
and um, they used to come and they've stopped coming, or they came once, and they say things like, um, they used to come when uh, Marie Care was here, and they go, oh, it's not the same as that now, which you don't quite know what they mean. I suppose, I suppose I sort of vaguely do know what they mean. Um, and then other people, the one that's intrigued me is, they say, it's not what I thought it was. So what is it that we could do if, instead of this? I think when the lady was here, there was a lot of walking wounded came down from... She used to bring them yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of people sat They have no option, though. She used to bring them Yeah, the coffee. Yeah. We haven't really had that sort of nurse interest. Nurse import now, but we did say that we kind of we got it was forced down a bit by um, making them do the all 20 minutes on rotation. Yes. So, so we get each one of them down. Try to get them doing. I think it was just around that the break time, people could go and talk to the nurse on one side. go over the same basic information every no, meeting you guys for everybody because everybody's heard it. So the, the other thing is how do people get to know about the meeting? So there is some information out in the clinic in the waiting area but I guess you could probably beef up the sort of um, leaflet or whatever other method or poster. There are less it is put out in with the nurses. There's a new newsletter that goes out and says what the message. But maybe you yeah, just need a piece of paper that just says meeting today. Yeah. But also what 
uh, something that a more general bit of information that says this is the meeting this is who it's aimed at this is what we do yeah this is yeah. how you know this is where yeah. you find us you do get free samples <laughs> um yeah. they'll, be, they'll be charging down here for those we could do something like that, summarise it, and then slot it in that booklet as well. Yeah, because I think people pick the booklet up and then if they see that as an invitation to it, 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 it's it in the newsletter. Something for the That's why I said it is, but it's in the newsletter. It's very, there's so much. Yeah. text in that newsletter. Oh. Yeah, because people towards the end. they need to know they're not going to be you know. Be a, some people are quite anxious about going to a meeting. Will I be asked yeah. to speak? Do I have to do something? You know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, you used to have more notices in the way you did here, right? There used to be a notice, and I tried to put. I, I replaced mine, and I was putting it up, and the, the senior stroppy nurse, yeah, naming no names, yeah. Um, the notice can't put that there. Can't put that there. Yeah. Can, yeah. my, my poster was slightly bigger this time. <laughs> and she, and I, I did even I proposed moving one of her posters the size of an A4 from there to there. Oh, they won't be able to read it up there. Oh, I right. did propose that it was a rolling thing on the TV. Yeah. I think we can still do that. that. I, st- I, yeah, think that. That. I think Rachel's yeah, quite keen to take today. that on. Because people will be watching the telly and then they'll be quite educational. Right? Right? There's a meeting in the r to watch what free sandwiches. Yeah. It would be good. Or if a patient's coming for the first time, I got, when I first came, I got. Various information leaflets. I've got the yeah. individual cards yeah. for the for the specialist nurses and the contact numbers, and it was great. A, a, a detailed leaflet about this meeting could have just been given to me at that point. A picture of your happy smiling faces in here, sandwich in hand. You know that. Cute. 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 If you come yeah. here at ten o'clock in the morning, yeah. Yeah. and you think you're going to still be here at four o'clock at night, yeah. ten pounds. You got to sell your house. A lot of people yeah. don't. Well, now, we, now we've got more person power, we yes. can probably start to push more into the yeah. clinic. I, think, and the, I don't think we should assume that people are relaxed and comfortable with the idea of going to a meeting. No, no, I agree. The majority of people are not eating them. And if they look in on us, they're probably yeah. frightened to death. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I agree. I used to do that. Because you're a It's in Amazon, isn't it? There's about 50 who will attend during a year. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah, okay. so it's so it's been 40, 40, 50, something like that. So you might then need a bigger room. And, 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 and there are about 10 to 12 people. Oh, this, this True, time. yeah, there are others. Yeah. 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 So it's more convenient. For, for them. But I agree. I, I'd like, one of the reasons I want the, I'd like the nurses to come is to talk about procedural issues and <laughs> just, just yeah. what, what's going on. Um, but if I ask them, they go, what do you want me to talk about? Because it's so obvious to them, they don't yeah. think about yeah. talking about it. But even but talking, it's been, I can think of loads of things we could cover. Yeah, well, that, yeah. 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 The yeah. Is, they, they, they're, not, they're not thinking outside the box, because what they need to do is, like you say, go right back to the bare basics. So why am I having this blood test? What does that level mean? What does it mean if it's high? What does it mean if it's low? If you, you know, dose adjustment, what then? How long do you know about the changes? You can, yeah. just, you can keep going Absolutely. and going and going. Simple things that. like communication and the relationship exactly. between this clinic and the GP. The GP will prescribe what do I do next? Yeah. You know, because I get calls, I feel all those calls. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've been to the GP and he won't give me the drugs. They're not here from the hospital, what do yeah. I do? And you know, so they, yeah. all those processes, they, they need to know that they can come in and well, get some answers. Absolutely, yeah. but they need to know that if they're sat at home having left the clinic or. Yeah. You know, these things before you come to clinic, you know, um, that you can know what to do. You need that little mm-hmm. sheet to say what to do in the event mode, you know, um, because it's tougher than ever now because GPs will not do anything unless they've got the instructions from someone else. It's the time where the GP just accepted that they were under a specialist service, yeah. that was the requirement, but now, and, and also, I must tell you, and we don't details of this yet, we're just exploring it. Apparently there's some new rule out now that the GPs aren't taking responsibility for something. Yeah, we can already under someone that's yeah. special. Yeah, stuff, so, so now they're, they're yeah. pushing back with our letters saying yeah. this is not my not my role now. You yeah. have to do it. And so we're getting lots of pushback on that. So you know 
So all these things that need to be, so yeah, the okay. patient doesn't feel isolated and not know what to do. I mean, so we, sort of, we need to deal with that directly. Absolutely, yeah. We need maybe to. here you have, maybe, maybe not being entirely um, sensible. If you, you, have, you sort of had a desk yeah. and uh, ask questions here, sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah, that's no, exactly right. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what the readers could get going on. She's just going to have like a, a little desk yeah, out yeah. in the corner. And if you came and you had rather than just yeah, so we produced a, a comment sheet, didn't yeah, we? Yes. Because yeah, I said that we need something where people can just, just ask the questions, not one, or even if they want to do a face to face, that yeah. you could just scribble it down and say, can you leave me? Let me know yeah. about that. You know, yeah. so we we didn't produce that, but um, you know, because like that really wants to in this setting even to no, ask the question in front of other people. Yeah. It might be yeah. the simplest of things. Yeah. We might still think, well, actually, it's a bit obvious that, but yeah. it's not to agree you don't to, yeah. Um, so I, I do think, like you say, there's, there's lots of it to cover, but I think what we don't want is people sat at home and not getting the answer yeah. that they need, and, and especially GPs getting tougher on, yeah. you know, they're pushing it back all the time, and there's a time um, issue with this as well, because people have to wait then mm -hmm. before they can get anything. Yeah. If it falls near the weekend, that can run really around getting scripts done for people to, you know, yeah. if they're not on home care, then they have to come back and not everyone's local. So for, yeah. for some of that, we're going to need support from the nurse. Yeah. Well, that's what's well, I think we should. Have each one of us got an allocated nurse? Now, we will change well, around. As far as all work, you do. Well, you could do that. Not yeah. necessarily, no, because the way it's, so what they've got now is they've got more. I don't know, the nurse, the nurse. You got? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I've got a little session. So, yeah, you've got four nurses that you've got access to. One's part time, and then there's a new OPAP team, which shouldn't affect you unless you go on IVs. But you know, in total, there's nine nurses. But there's four glioceratosis. Because in clinic, you're not quite sure who, whether they one of the chest clinic nurses or one of the nurses. You should know your nurses. You should know your glioceratosis nurses. They should be introducing themselves in the clinic. Oh, you should be approaching you for your calls and your, you know, and anything else, and you should know who they are. So should be identified just been given the form to, you know, the no, that's form that you should just given in and they, they should be the, making the themselves known to you, and they should be there giving you contact details, who they are, how to get hold of them. Yeah, that should happen. These are the procedural things. Yeah, no, so no. please tell me anything like that because yeah. I will bring that up because that because the the news is issue. just yeah. on the clipboard. So the so the the, the, the clipboard has the questionnaire on mm -hmm. and the news and the newsletter. So when you you know so you choose the you got your newsletter is all you need got to take it. No, no. So no, I think no. you saw this is the newsletter. Have we started this debate? Oh, please tell me more. I think what I would have observed over the years is it, they appear to be very busy they are, and under a lot of pressure. Are, yeah. I mean, it is, chaotic, it is a lot harder now just yeah. to speak to somebody. If yeah, you yeah. walk to the desk because you've got a query, 
you may well not find anybody there because they're all off doing stuff. True, and but you should know them and they should know you. Yeah, and, and certainly there is a difference. Yeah. When I first started, yeah. were, you, know, you were given introductions, you were given all the individual yeah. cards. That seems to have lapsed, but yeah. as I say, I wouldn't necessarily criticise I'm not saying they should be sitting down with everyone and, you know, no. getting a full, but what I'm saying is they should be recognising the patients. And they, yeah. if you come into clinic, they might not be able to stop and talk to you, but they should be able to sure. use that knowledge. But, but equally, know. if the patients are, are, are well informed as to how to use the service, yeah. Yeah. then we will be more effective in using what's there in the right yeah. way, which will actually make it run more efficiently, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, because a lot of time is wasted. I mean, I've done it myself because I've, I've gone in to maybe ask for something for the yeah. nebulizer. Yeah. They say, well, actually, what you're supposed to do is ring up and leave a message on this yeah. number and all that, yeah. which was, for some reason, information I hadn't really got. Yeah. So I've wasted somebody's time with yeah, something yeah. that yeah. if I had that information up front, it would have all been. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. it should be in the book, the book that's mm -hmm. information. Is there any more bits of information we can put on? Yeah, the there is actually um, a leaf, a, a, a one, a, an A5 piece of paper mm -hmm. for a nebulizer patient, which tells them a range of things mm -hmm. about maintenance and using the phone line. I didn't get that the first time around, for whatever reason. But the better informed the patients, the more efficient we'll be yeah, using the service, yeah. which will take some pressure off them. Yeah. Because, you know, well, I, as I say, I'm loath to criticise because yeah, no, 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 it I looks a bit like World War III out there, especially on a third prize. It's price. just about making it more efficient for everybody yeah. because they'll have less of a workload if you get it right at the start yeah. and you'll be asking less questions. So yeah. it's better for you and better for them in the long run. So I think if you, if you actually know the emergency, you're more likely to be, you will be more likely to be able to be able to be because yeah. we used to ring George Ealing, but we don't ring anybody. I think we talked yeah. about that earlier. I think, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mine was on You're getting more phone calls than yeah. anybody else. I used to get around 40 away. Yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to worry about that. Yeah, you go to Melbourne. Around the phone. Yeah, you go to Melbourne. Around the phone. Around the phone. Oh, that was a worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did anyone actually read the newsletter? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really more, like, apart from the big, I'm talking about this meeting, back, yeah. it's duplicated information. Yeah, in the back. Yeah. yeah. So maybe on the newsletter, you should put the, the, next, the next meeting at the top of the, the front page. Next it's meeting is rather than, you know, so that it's right at the top for people to see. And then, then they can read the rest of the letter. Oh, yes. We're just about done, but this relates to the earlier slide. These are the reasons why people don't come here, okay? 65% say it's inconvenient. So two-thirds of them, no matter what we talked about, they wouldn't be, be um, 8% say it isn't useful, so I'm quite pleased with that, because at least we're useful to 92% of the population, so that's good. Uh, 6% don't feel the need for the support and 23% are happy where they are. So that proportion are, fall into the category of the, they, they don't want to come, they're happy the way they are, maybe they don't want to know, uh, that type of thing. But I think if we worked in some more actual procedural stuff and got the nurses to yeah. come, but that's the big, the big barrier. We can't, the nurses won't come down on a, on a regular basis, essentially. I'll tell you the answer, we need to get to all this. Can you talk around not some of the nursing stuff? I, I understand your specialist bit is research, but it seems, to, and I'm not here every month, so I get that. But the last two years, every talk's been about what we found new or what's yeah. going to happen, yeah. or and and that's all good. But that's, do you know, what I mean, it's not it's not what the meeting was set up for originally. It's supposed to be helping the patient, it's supporting the patient, and. That is great for the patient 20 years down the line, you know, and, and it's, I guess your job and it's what you're all geared up yeah. and happy about, like what you talked about today, that's really exciting news for you guys, but well, someone that walks in today for their first meeting, I don't think they'll learn much, if that makes sense, yes, yes, you know, yes. well if you just spend 10 minutes saying, take your tablets with coke because that makes it bad, you know, yeah. doing all yeah. the myths and all the, and make sure when you're in the garden, that's the boring stuff, that's the stuff we've done that for 10 years kind of bit, but spending 10, 15 minutes on that might help that new people. Yeah. 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 Y
That's interesting because uh, I don't really, we don't, I don't really want to say that. So what? No, but that's what so that's people what are people actually turn up. I don't, I've heard it, I've heard it all. But in that yeah, way, you know, also, you know, we've heard that all eight years ago. With, yeah. With slap sense, do you know? There's a lot of stuff yes. we we've, we've forgot. There's a lot of things you forgot. Or it doesn't hurt to go over it for 10, 15 minutes. Unless, you know, we, unless we pick a um, well, you might, yeah, a one, two, three, three more. Yeah. That, that yeah. 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 I know what you mean. So you can like do Christmas trees, don't ten, ten, ten things at yeah. that meeting yeah. and then ten facts for the next meeting. So exactly. You just have the, the, the ten-minute fact session. What you can do at home, right? This yeah. month, try and concentrate on this at home. Get your washing off the radios, get your windows open, do this, do that, right? Then the next month, right, do this, right, right. you really we'll get out of it. Right? No, no. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? But that's something that even yeah. though you're not the nurse, you could do that. If you're I, not could do, I could do all of that, and it's important that you give me that because I wouldn't think about it. Yeah, for Maybe. you that's bread and butter. And sometimes the the research stuff might be super exciting for you guys, but to us it's not. But it's, be, it's meant to present it so that it gives you some. Hope yeah, the future. we yeah. can see what's coming. But I can see that it's a limit, you know, what's, I mean, I mean like we, I've just done that because that, that payback had to be. Well, yeah, that's possible. Now that Paul's coming yeah. next, week, next week and Paul's going to also do a researchy type thing. Um, but then we've got another hour to talk about other things. Yeah, no, I mean, if we were to say there are, I don't know, say there are 50 things it's really important to know about the aspirin system. Yeah. 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 Then, yeah. and we're going to pick so many. So this needs a meeting. So each. We, we, need, yeah. we need a list. Yeah, there are two things, like two areas I think, the, the, the 50 things whatever it is, it's important to know as an aspirosis patient. And for new people, picking some of those each time as a topic, because you don't want to do all 50. Mm -hmm. But for new people it'll be new information, for others it'll be a reminder of something you may not have heard for a while. And there might be some updates to it. The other thing it's good to talk about on a regular basis, I guess, is just the way the clinic operates. Yes. Very useful for new people, That's good reminder for those who should be coming for a long time. Yeah. So maybe those are the two kind of practical areas that would bear repeating. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. If we can find a way of doing it, to kind of please read yeah. this list again. Yeah. 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 I think we could work yeah. along those lines. I think we need to redesign. We need a list of topics that we're going to mm. redesign things. The trouble is, we're talking about it. Talking to people. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're not the new people. Yeah. yeah. So, right. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've met patients on the ward and said, "Oh, we're going down to go down to the meeting. I've down the dressing gown and all sorts. But there's people on the wall. All on the top, and they're not bothered. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested. Yeah. I just want to get so out of here. I don't. I, I don't. Have you. I think there are always going to be a limited number of people actually yeah. Yeah. motivated to come to the meeting. Yeah. Um, but there have been people saying, you know, they talk about something more basic, not those words. But, yeah. And I don't know actually what they mean by that. So a list of stuff for me to write about. simple stuff. What you can do at home, some yeah. of the myths, yes. get rid of some of yeah. the myths. Yeah. Maybe like to some, of, some of the basics. Some of the numbers and stuff that if mm. you're really struggling, yeah. who can I phone? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, say the nurses, and for Doug to turn around and yeah. say he doesn't know who the nurses are, he's been coming for years. Yeah. No, so, well, but for him to yeah. say he doesn't know who the nurse is, I'll, I'll that's a big issue. We'll do that as, as one of the things. That so that sounds the other like thing so was just, you just half, half of your, it's half you and half me. It is, yeah. 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 The other thing that uh, I need to check as well, which you've just highlighted, Doug, um, whether the nurses actually do go on the wards to see patients. The, the nurses are quite new, and I'm not sure whether they. Cause I don't know about these. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. No, I can do that. The thing is, you don't want to say that. No, I'm 
Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 we're not taking it that way. But what I need to know is to, to put it right. If you don't know, well, how can we make it better? Yeah, we sure. can't. If you're in the nurse, I'm not taking it as, you know, oh, we're all going to get a beating now because they've not been doing the job. It's not like that at all. But, you know, they might not have even realised that. You're they might just have changed. changed. Yeah, we didn't and know they may not even name. realize if someone's not filtered that through yeah. to them that actually you should be doing that. Well, well, nobody but told me. Yeah. By the same token, the, the nurses need a forum, an yeah. opportunity to say, could you feed back to the patients? Exactly. It would help us if they yeah. did the following thing. But if you think about yeah. them joining, I don't know what the handover was for them. They may have just no. come and no one's passed that information over to them. So they could be quite innocently getting yeah. along, thinking they're doing what they should be doing. Exactly. When, when I was first diagnosed, and years ago, and Marie was brought in, the classic enemies, just started in the impact. It would, the novelty of having a spurgulosis, nobody had ever heard of it. Nobody on the ward had ever heard of it. No, it was like, it was like a novelty thing. Yeah. Whereas now, I think the nurses that are being brought in now, they think he's been going for donkey gyms. Yeah. They think <laughs> my, they think my grandparents had it. Yeah. 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 It's all fuss about yeah. it. Yeah. This, this and like you say, some of the treatments, it's all hard to them. Yes, yeah. yeah. the yeah. treatments are yeah. really hard to do. You know, think how we used to have to fight for the funding for stuff. I mean, I know you say you've been doing it for seven or eight years, but that's the length of time that people know about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Come in right at the very beginning, just as we all are. Yeah. And I think perhaps the nurses out there, they, they think it's been wrong. Don't they do Well, you see, this, this clinic has always been run as a unique kind of clinic. If you went into a clinic in any other hospital, that's how a clinic would be run. Yeah. Yeah. But if you look back at five, ten years ago, that clinic was always a friendly clinic where the nurses mm -hmm. would always come and play yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we was astounded when when we first called me Dave and, and Marie's coming over and she's saying this and she's telling me that. I felt when she was on a, a, a train to London once and she started phoning you. I'd never known that. And people actually, you know, it, it was a, a, a unique yeah, kind of clinic. It was, yeah, yeah. And maybe you've just filtered down back to the hey, just a normal clinic where you've got nurses and send on everybody up home and friendly bit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This is important talking to other people. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, we could change the purpose of what we're doing and get nurses. I can't really imagine bringing a nurse up to, to, to receive complaints. No, 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 well, that's not fair. Right? I don't think it is a complaint. I think what it is is when you think a new people would know, would they? No. You know, no, 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 that it's no. just a clinic. Okay. But when you've been coming for the yeah, years, you know, it, it would be a brilliant and, and you were there at the beginning, and we were spoiled, you see it yeah. change, and you just presume that that change becomes, well, uh, because uh, now it's not Georgina, unusual, Georgina it's just loads. and Marie came through from a specialist research, they were already interested and in committed to the mm -hmm. subject, the new nurses that have come in, have come in from other disciplines, yes. and I don't really have the background, I don't yeah. think, yeah. Um, so that they're, they're not just nurses, but they're the, ne the nurses, rather than having a personal interest, is the impression yeah. I'm getting from, from the new the new ones that have come in. Um, so that might be part of the difference. But I think you could really, you know, we, we've changed this into a a meeting that helps with with the service generally. We've changed it into a meeting that's helping out with different types of research, and I think it's better. You know, that's we should be changing it into a feedback forum in some way. Talking about bits, you know. That we sort of did know but might have forgotten. Yeah. And you, you yeah. Well, nobody if else would give us that information. If you're doing that live on Facebook, yeah. then that is going to be valuable information as well. And those people on Facebook who can sort of say, oh, I can relate to that, yes. may well say, oh, go next time. As yes. opposed to yes. listening to something that. And some do occasionally. Yeah, that, yeah. that they feel is above their head, or if it's like that, that's too difficult. And that's a good point. Yeah, the other thing, we talk about nurses, but the doctors as well, I mean, that's a pretty much a moving target in terms of the different doctors that are out there in that team. 
uh, which isn't a criticism, but, but from the patient's point of view, you get your appointment, you turn up, and you go through the door, and you know, you're not sure who you're going to see. Yeah. And it's quite likely. I mean, I've it's probably the majority of times I've seen someone I've never seen before. Again, not a criticism, but it would be quite useful through this meeting or through some of the mechanism just to say, this is the current team. And yes. I think through this meeting, it would be good to have an understanding of what the hierarchy is. Yes. yes. So, yes. Yes. Prof Denning, there's all the titles. We want photos of everyone. I, I well. yeah. That might be good. Good luck with that one. Pass, <laughs> pass, pass turn around the more people. Oh, I can't do it because... I know, we go, I go around with, with the mobile phone. Yeah. All three of us go around with yeah. the mobile phone and we get each of them. Yeah. Might not have to be a great picture, right. but it, it will be a but it'd be good, good to know who they are, what their, yeah. what their level is, what their level is, yeah. you know, a bit of background. But I was told when I saw some of them at the dining, you know, when I'm not part of the team, you are all doctors, there's no higher on. Yeah, well, fine, if that's the case. That's the case. But my guess is they've got different experience. I'll get you all that information. So we've, got some, we've got some new people, so yeah. we've got a new doctor. I think we can change things by a lot. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. So, sorry, we've overrun quite a lot. We've got one more question. Do you know what I write every other day? Writing like a, a short little thing. Don't forget to do this, or don't forget to do that. Yeah, but yeah. well, you'll get people talking. Don't forget to not put your socks on radio. You're so stupid, and then you yeah. leave it. And you talking. could do it with the new Facebook background, so that would be quite Yeah, and you could do that every other day. Put yeah. something new on. Don't well, forget do Christmas trees. You could do something like that without an answer. Get everybody to talk and say, yeah. find out it's our next meeting. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Rachel has a lot of expertise in, in, in marketing yeah, yeah. through social media, essentially. So, yeah. Looks like yeah, I sort of thing. It's probably going on every morning and spending two minutes. Probably only takes two minutes, it's but it's every, every morning doing it. But it actually needs a lot of people to actually be able to discuss that and get it straight in their heads. Yeah. You know, day to day, what does this mean for me? And it yeah. pops up on your news feed. So now we've got three or four heads working on that. might actually have. It was just me. There's an awful lot too many jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Working for Professor Denny. Yeah. <coughs> anyway, that was a really good discussion. Thank you very much for that. And we, I will really try and think about how we can address those issues. That, that's more than the end. So, safe journey out. Thanks for coming. And um, next week, next month is Paul Bowyer giving us the feedback on all the. Uh, research they do here with all your samples that uh, has been collected. Yeah.